In July of 1935 a revolutionary aircraft had her maiden flight. It was the Horton H-2 Habicht or Hawk, a German flying wing motor glider. The Hawk had a thick, reflex section wing. The developer's first glider was a true flying wing without any vertical surfaces or fuselage which had flown for seven hours in 1934. It had attracted much interest, but was hard to control and made only one competitive flight. The Hawk had a wing of greater span and higher aspect ratio than the shallow delta of the first glider, with sweep on the trailing edges as well. With improved yaw control it flew much better, though a test report from Hannah Reich, the famous German aviator and test pilot, who set more than 40 flight altitude records and women's endurance records in gliding and unpowered flight made it clear that more work was required. The designers of this unique aircraft were Walter Horton and Raymar Horton, often credited as the Horton brothers. Between the world wars, the Treaty of Versailles limited the construction of German military airplanes. In response, German military flying became semi-clandestine, taking the form of civil clubs where students trained on gliders under the supervision of ex-World War I veterans. This led the Hortons away from the dominant design trends and toward experimenting with alternative airframes, building models and then filling their parents' house with full-sized wooden sailplanes. The first Horton glider flew in 1933, by which time both brothers were members of the Hitler Youth. The Horton's glider designs were extremely simple and aerodynamic, generally consisting of a huge, tailless albatross wing with a tiny cocoon of a fuselage, in which the pilot lay prone. The great advantage of the Horton designs was the relatively low parasitic drag of their airframes. By 1939, with Adolf Hitler in power and the Treaty of Versailles no longer in effect, Walter and Raymar had entered the Luftwaffe as pilots. Walter was a fighter pilot on the Western Front, flying a BF-109 for Jagdgeschwader or Fighter Wing 26 in the first six months of World War II. He participated in the Battle of Britain, secretly flying as the wingman for Adolf Galland, and shot down seven British aircraft. Walter eventually became the Wings's technical officer. Raymar was also trained as a Mi-109 pilot. However, in August 1940, he was transferred to a glider pilot school. Although the Horton brothers were often called upon as design consultants, Germany's aeronautical community tended to regard the Hortons too extreme and they were not part of the cultural elite. The Luftwaffe did not actually use many of the Hortons' designs. For example the Horton H-5 a delta-winged, tailless, twin-engine motor glider designed and built in the early 1940s by Walter and Raymar Horton was used for various experimental duties, including, innovative structure, performance, stability and control of flying wing aircraft. It was the first aircraft to be built using an all-composite material structure. The next design came in 1942. The Horton H-7 began as a test bed for the Argus Pulse jet engine but this project was cancelled in 1943. Walter Horton piloted its first flight in May 1944 and took part in many hours of a series of test flights, partly intended to quell concerns about the tailless aircraft's controllability in the case of an asymmetric power loss. The same year the Luftwaffe launched Operation Steinbach a strategic bombing campaign which targeted southern England from January to May 1944. Steinbach was the last strategic air offensive by the German bomber arm during the conflict. It became clear that conventional German bombers were capable of reaching Allied targets across Great Britain, but were suffering devastating losses from Allied fighters in the process. So Hermann Göring, the head of the German Air Force issued a request for design proposals for a bomber that was capable of carrying a 1,000 kg load over 1,000 km at 1,000 km per hour. At the time, there was no conventional means for aircraft designers to meet these goals, the new Junkers Jumo 004B turbojets could provide the required speed, but had excessive fuel consumption. However, the Horton brothers concluded that the low-drag flying wing design could meet all of the goals, by reducing the drag, cruise power could be reduced to the point where the range requirement could be met. They put forward their private project, the Horton H-9, as the basis for the bomber. 
While designs without vertical stabilizers require more active control by either the pilot or some flight control systems and lead to bank angle restrictions, they also lead to less aerodynamic drag and a lower radar cross-section. The German Air Ministry quickly approved the Horton proposal, but ordered the addition of two cannons, as they felt the aircraft would also be useful as a fighter due to its estimated top speed being significantly higher than that of any Allied aircraft. Goring was reportedly impressed with the design and personally intervened to ensure that three prototypes were ordered at a cost of 500,000 Reichsmarks. At one point, the Air Ministry issued an order for 100 production aircraft, although this was subsequently reduced to 20 aircraft. Furthermore, as the Horton brothers lacked appropriate production facilities, it was decided that the manufacturing of the aircraft would be carried out by an established company, the Gother Wagon Fabric, a German manufacturer of rolling stock. On March 1, 1944, the first prototype an unpowered glider with fixed tricycle landing gear, performed its maiden flight. Flight results were very favorable, but there was an accident when the pilot attempted to land without first retracting an instrument-carrying pole extending from the aircraft. The test was followed in December 1944 by the Junkers Jumo 004-powered second prototype. In the meantime Goring believed in the design so much that he ordered a production series of 40 aircraft, even though it had not yet taken to the air under jet power. On February 2, 1945, the first flight of the second prototype was conducted. All of the subsequent test flights and development were conducted by Gothor Factory. Two further test flights were performed, on February 2, 1945 and on February 18, 1945. The test pilot was Lt. Erwin Ziller an experienced glider and Mi-262 jet fighter pilot. Two weeks later, on February 18, 1945, disaster struck during the third test flight. After about 45 minutes in the air, one of the engines caught fire and stopped. Ziller was seen to put the aircraft into a dive and pull up several times in an attempt to restart the engine. Ziller made a series of four complete turns at 20 degrees angle of bank. He did not use his radio or eject from the aircraft, and may already have been unconscious as a result of the fumes from the burning engine. The aircraft crashed just outside the boundary of the airfield, Ziller was thrown from the aircraft on impact and died from his injuries two weeks later. The aircraft was completely destroyed. Despite this setback, the project continued. Because of the deteriorating war situation the prototype workshop was moved to Western Thuringia. In March 1945 the work was started on the third prototype. It was larger than previous prototypes, the shape being modified in various areas and it was meant to be a template for the pre-production series day fighters, of which 20 machines had been ordered. It was meant to be powered by two Jumo 004C engines, each with 10% greater thrust than the earlier production engine and could carry two cannons in the wing routes. In April 1945, George Patton's Third Army captured the factory and the third prototype which was undergoing final assembly. It was later was shipped to the United States for evaluation. It is interesting to note, that the Horton brothers were unable to witness the test flights as they were occupied with producing the design for a new turbojet-powered strategic bomber in response to the America bomber competition. This aircraft, the unbuilt Horton H-18 represented, in many respects, a scaled-up version of the Horton H-9. During the Christmas 1944 holidays, Raymar and Walter Horton worked on the design specifications for their all-wing bomber. They drew up a rough draft and worked on weight calculations, allowing for fuel, crew, armaments, landing gear and bomb load. Ten variations were eventually worked out, each using a different number of existing turbojets. The version that the Hortons thought would work best would utilize six Jumo 004B turbojets, which were buried in the fuselage and exhaust over the rear of the aircraft. They were fed by air intakes located in the wing's leading edge. To save weight they thought of using a landing gear that could be jettisoned immediately after takeoff and landing on some kind of skid. The Ho 18A was to be built mainly of wood and held together with a special carbon-based glue. 
As a result, the huge flying wing should go largely undetected by radar. The Hortons were told to make a presentation for their America bomber design on February 25, 1945 in Berlin. The meeting was attended by representatives of the five aircraft companies who originally submitted ideas for the competition. No one challenged their assertion that their flying wing bomber could get the job done. A few days later the Hortons were told to report to Reichsmarschall Goring, who wanted to talk to the brothers personally about their proposed America bomber. There they were told that they were to work with the Junkers company in building the aircraft. Several days later Raymar and Walter Horton met with the Junkers engineers, who had also invited some Messerschmitt engineers. Suddenly it seemed that the Horton's design was to be worked on by committee. The Junkers and Messerschmitt engineers were unwilling to go with the design that the Hortons presented several days earlier. Instead, the committee wanted to place a huge vertical fin and rudder to the rear. Raymar Horton was angry, as this would add many more man-hours, plus it would create drag and thus reduce the range. The committee also wanted to place the engines beneath the wing, which would create additional drag and reduce the range even further. After two days of discussion, they chose a design that had huge vertical fins, with the cockpit built into the fin's leading edge. Six Jumo 004A jet engines were slung under the wing, three to an nacelle on each side. The bomb bay would be located between the two nacelles, and the tricycle landing gear would also be stored in the same area. Raymar was unhappy with the final design, so he went about redesigning the aircraft, to be known as the Ho 18B. It had a three-man crew which sat upright in a bubble-type canopy near the apex of the wing. There were two fixed main landing gear assemblies with two turbojets mounted to each side. During flight, the tires would be covered by doors to help cut down on air resistance and drag, a nose wheel being considered not necessary. Overall, the aircraft would have weighed about 35 tons fully loaded. Fuel was to be stored in the wing so that no auxiliary fuel tanks would be required. It was estimated that the Ho 18B would have a range of 11,000 km, a service ceiling of 16 km and a round-trip endurance of 27 hours. Although armament was considered unnecessary, Raymar Horton proposed that two cannon could be mounted directly below the cockpit. Work was supposed to start immediately, and the Goring expected the aircraft to be built by the fall of 1945, which Raymar Horton reported to be impossible. Germany surrendered two months. As the war ended, Raymar Horton emigrated to Argentina, where he continued designing and building gliders, including one experimental supersonic delta-wing aircraft and the four-engine flying wing FMA IA-38 Naranjero, intended to carry oranges from producers to Buenos Aires. It was a four-engine experimental tailless transport aircraft, based on the Horton Ho-8 project. The prototype only made its first flight to December 9, 1960. The IA-38 proved to be difficult to control, and was underpowered, giving a poor performance, while the engines also suffered from overheating. The prototype made three more test flights before the project was cancelled in 1962. After the project was cancelled, the IA-38 was placed in the grounds of the aeronautical school, where it was used as a static display until a fire destroyed the aircraft's skin. The remains of the plane were scrapped afterwards. Walter Horton remained in Germany after the war and became an officer in the post-war German Air Force. Raymar died on his ranch in Argentina in 1994, while Walter died in Germany in 1998. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.